can start here. Uh, welcome back, Brandon. Thank you for being here. UFC 274 is in the rearview mirror. It came and went, uh, and we have quite a bit to talk about. There was a lot of talking points, things that developed after we recorded our previous episode doing the breakdown for this pay-per-view. Uh, we had champions missing weight. Uh, we had some fights fall out, uh, not happen, uh, particularly the Cowboy um the Cowboy Cerrone fight and Joe Lozon, um, but there is still a ton of talking points regarding this card, and we will go ahead and start off with the showcase fight. We'll, we'll, we'll cover the three main fights that happened. Uh, Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson. Um, Tony Ferguson was coming into this fight on a three-fight losing streak. Uh, Michael Chandler on a two-fight losing streak of his own, uh, but Tony Ferguson, notably, compared to how he was doing before his losing streak, um, the guy was at the top of the world, uh, missed out on his shot to, to fight for the belt, um, but he was coming off of losses to Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira, Benil Dariush, um, and then, of course, Michael Chandler. Uh, going into this fight, Tony Ferguson looked great in that first round. Um, yeah, amazing. I, I don't know like what you were expecting from Tony Ferguson in, in this fight. The way that this fight played out was kind of what I was expecting, but it happened a bit faster than I was expecting. Um, but I guess that's what happens when you get the lightweight UL Ramiro and Michael Chandler. The dude is right. practically the most explosive fighter in the UFC right now. Uh, pound for pound, bang for your buck in terms of who you want to pay for to, to see fight. Um, Michael Chandler is must-see TV right now. Um, but it was really tough watching what he did to Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson came out in, in, in the first round, was really putting it together on the feet. He looked good. He was using lateral movement really well, which I thought, as soon as I saw that, I thought that's going to start giving Chandler some problems because Chandler yeah. just wants violence. He wants back and forth, come at me. So I, I was looking at the way Tony Ferguson was moving and thinking like, this dude, he's he showed up and he looked great. Right. Um, he dropped Michael Chandler early in the, in the first round. Um, so I started to get giddy. I mean, I've not been a Tony Ferguson yeah. guy. No, yeah, it, it felt really good. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of a classic thing that happens with me. I tend, like, I, I start to, like, endear myself to certain fighters after they lose. Right. It's weird because, like, oh. Tony Ferguson, yeah. got on his streak up to the top of the lightweight division, I was always picking against him. I was just always in yeah. my mind as, and like, that's what sucks. he's great. That's what sucks. So yeah. Bad. Um, but going into the second round, it didn't take Michael Chandler long. Uh, Tony Ferguson... Had to work off of his back a little bit in that first round, but was still working from the bottom. We know how dangerous is he is with elbows there. Um, but Michael Chandler punted him straight to the jaw, yeah. showed Tony Ferguson the inside of his own skull, um, and put him out cold, which we have never seen before from Tony Ferguson. He was out for a couple minutes by all accounts. It, it's hard to tell because they, they don't keep the camera on them as far as the, the live broadcast. Right. Um, but it was a really, really fucked up reminder that uh, this is a cold sport. Um, yeah. And uh, Michael Chandler, he's not much younger. I don't even know if he's younger than Tony Ferguson, but Tony Ferguson, I believe, he's is 36. He's a lot younger. I, I, I was shipping out because I think Chandler's 33, right? I I could see if it'll show me right now. But, yeah, I, I yeah. was thinking that. Yeah. Oh, no, Chandler's also 36. Um, is he? Yeah. So Tony okay. Ferguson. Uh, Tony Ferguson. I was shipping 38. out. Sorry. Which is yeah, dude. ancient for a lightweight. Um. I, I didn't know right. that Tony Ferguson was was that old. I thought he was thirty six, like I was just saying. What what was your main takeaway right. from from this fight? Is it is this the end for Tony Ferguson? What do you think? No, it's not. It should be, but it's not. And it's. I was a big fan of his just because he was so. It was so crazy the way he, he was just so violent. He was just so freaking violent, and he was. Um, a lot of people were saying he was. Or Charles Oliveira is like Tony Ferguson, like to the next, to the next level of what Tony Ferguson is or was, I guess. And uh, he was like Oliveira before that. He just never got the shot. And it, it, what really sucked was like you saw him in the press conferences leading up to where he was like self aware. Like, you know, when that friend of yours who's like kind of off kind of realizes, like, oh, you guys laugh at me you fucking laugh at me. You're not like my boys. Like you guys fucking make fun of me. Like that's yeah. fucked up. I thought we were cool for like the longest time, dude. Yeah. And now I'm realizing like you guys are just dicks, like always making fun of me. And 
and it, it kind of like was like shit, dude. People were I got. I'll say for sure the fact he was like throwing around a baseball and like I'm good at baseball and like this, some of the wild shit like he said breaking his student's rib to yeah. uh, Darius and he's like why did you do that you fucking wanted or what the fuck <laughs> what did he say and he like threw it it's like whoa dude you're I think I think like it's part of like Tony Ferguson being confident but awkward yeah you know, yeah yeah you know? and then we all have those friends too mm-hmm. where it's like that's how they are or whatever but they're still your boys you know but then they kind of realize like oh like they break that wall where it's like oh shit dude they're fucking laughing at me dog mm-hmm. and it, you kind of saw that in the press conference it's like oh man it's like in his head and then he came out he came out like i don't even want to say that that was vintage tony because uh he in the in the past because he, he wasn't really taking any damage he was slipping and he was he just looked amazing with his hands and I think it made a big difference because in previous camps or in previous fights, he said he wasn't training. He wasn't training the right way. He was going through a lot of crazy stuff personally or whatever it may have been. Um, he was coming off of injuries. Like he came off of that knee injury after like, mo- like a lot of people, you got, you need 18 months you yeah. know, to do something like that. He was back in what, six months. Uh, it was extraordinary. His- it was crazy. Yeah, was he- videos of him kicking steel pipes and shit. And it's like, guy, yeah, chill. Yeah. He made weight uh, when he had no business. He didn't have to. He had no reason to make weight, and he just goes, "I'm gonna fucking make weight anyway." It's like, why are you? Why? And so, it's to see him like kind of like that decline. It was so so weird. It, and then a lot of people kind of. I I have a, a friend of mine who's young, who's significantly younger than me, and um, he was just like, "Man, this is so weird to see that." Like I remember, and I was like, "Dude." Like I seen, we we seen a lot of guys. You know, when you've been watching it as long as we have, like there's a lot of like. I mean, look at uh, Shogun was on the card. Like that just looked weird, and I was watching it with um like close family, and they were like, "What the hell? Look at this guy!" And I was like, "Don't!" I was like, "Okay, just calm down. Like, don't talk <laughs> about him that way. Like, just just let the man fight." Dude. Yeah, yeah. So like, seeing Tony Ferguson get knocked out that way was so. It, but it, it didn't feel it felt a lot of different ways i guess because it's like you expected that was going to happen it actually happened and you still had the feelings of like what the fuck you yeah. got knocked out like that it was it's just crazy. seeing him get colded like that i mean it it was it was the feeling when we saw cheeto vera kick frankie edgar in the face and put him out cold yeah. you know what i mean it's yeah. like um there's there's dudes getting finished and then there's that there yeah. is All well time. i'm i'm legitimately worried about this man's health right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um and, and not only that it was cool though that was a, i mean let's take a second here and fucking talk about michael chandler who was taking fucking tony ferguson's best shot took his best shot the guy was fighting like he wanted his career back a legend was like, I need this. I need this dude. Like, I'm gonna take this back from you. Yeah. And then he he couldn't get his hands on him. He couldn't. So he put his fucking foot in his mouth. <laughs> like that's uh, that's legit. And uh, one thing I was thinking about, and you just mentioned Frankie Edgar is when Frankie Edgar was the champ. Um, they used to really scoff because uh, Chandler was the champ in Bellator at that time, and Chandler was my. I mean. I think Chandler in his prime would have kicked the sh- and Frankie Edgar was a, amazing dude, mm-hmm. a great champion, Hall, Hall of Famer maybe. Yeah. But I think <laughs> a prime Tony Ferguson would have kicked the living shit out of Frankie Edgar, yeah. dude. Yeah. And he was the number one pound for or number one at least in that weight class, even though he was in Bellator, he was like head and shoulders above what Frankie Edgar was. And I think it's it kind of sucks that we were robbed of seeing that. But it doesn't at the same time. But it's something. It's definitely one of those mind, those mind games you play with yourself. Like, man, what if you would have been in there? Like, what if those wars would have been like, like uh, Chandler and G, uh, Chandler and BJ Penn, yeah. you know, or, or those kind of fights we got robbed of. That would have been pretty crazy. Yeah, it is a little bit of a shame that Michael Chandler didn't make the jump over to the UFC earlier. I mean, selfishly, right. I'd say that selfishly as a fan because, I mean, he probably has no problem with it. I'm sure he made good money in Bellator. There's a reason that he was probably over there. Um, but right. the guy has made such a splash. And for a guy who's 2-2 two and two right now, 
Um, it's hard not to like the guy. He says everything right. He cuts a perfect yeah. promo after this. The dude like slept Tony Ferguson and did four backflips in the octagon. Like he is. I keep I keep wanting to make that Yoel Romero uh, comparison because he is just a ball of explosiveness. Um, yeah. And if you're in the way when when he lets go or when he he lets that energy go, um, he could put anybody to sleep in that division. It's it's really scary. I think um, he fights down to his competition a little bit, uh, and that's part of like something that we'll mention a little bit later and make yeah, compar- some point. comparisons to the Justin Gaethje. He's a little too Bro. willing to brawl, but I sure. mean that's what pays the bills. That's what is having. That's what has him in the conversation. Well, that's what got him straight to a title fight with one win over a Dan Hooker, who in retrospect is not looking so hot with his record in the, in at least right. in the lightweight, you know, or his record period. Um, so yeah, like Michael Chandler, he really made a statement. Uh, he's in conversation to potentially fight Conor McGregor, who he called out. Um, Nate Diaz who called him I out. Called, I called that. I called Chandler and McGregor. Yeah. I so, called that, but that's, that won't be seeing how, how, uh, Connor kind of uh, answered that on Twitter, where he was like, "Oh, good fight! You're like, yeah, great job. Uh, maybe I would see you." And then it's like, "Oh, he's gonna do that cowboy thing where he mm-hmm. respects the guy," mm-hmm. and then Chandler's gonna be all respectful as fuck, and the you know he's not gonna say anything wrong in the freaking. And then you're just gonna have the two white guys there, just kind of like, "Yeah, like he's good. Like, yeah, he's good. Right. Yeah, we're gonna fight." And so it's like, "Wow, you want him to? You got freaking." Wolverine, and then you have Conor McGregor and like <laughs> on a press conference, and then they're not even talking shit to each other. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but I would, I would absolutely. I think, I think, and I guess we'll talk. We're going to talk about it, but I think a lot of what happened this weekend, like you can conspiracy it out to where like it happened to make this specific like four man tournament, and I think we know who these four men are going to be. That. And then it plays itself out like a little mini storyline going forward, and the two guys who need it in their career, and then you know it's mm-hmm. going to be pretty crazy. Let's circle back to uh, Tony Ferguson for just a little bit more because there's a couple things that I wanted to ask you. Um, you've yeah. already said you think it it should be the end. Tony probably should yeah. walk away at this point. I would agree with you. Um, I, I I think that uh, I mean and he's already meant like alluded to on on Instagram that he's going to be back. This isn't going to be the end for him. So knowing that oh, he yeah. has every intention to continue fighting, he was what... posting breakdancing videos today. Was he? What Grace kind of in a fedora? Uh, how how far back down the rankings uh, do you want to see to- Tony Dan Hooker for, for Dan Hooker? It's a great fight. Uh, I think the Nate Diaz there fight would be good. They both um, need it. Nate Diaz is a guy who can yeah. give him an exciting fight, but who's not really, I, I at least I don't feel as somebody who's going to be a, a considerable knockout threat for Tony Ferguson. Right. I think it's a very winnable fight for Tony Ferguson, to be honest. Um, yeah, as far as dudes that he's going to accept um, fights against, I think that's about it at, at lightweight um, because yeah. you start getting a little bit further back. And I was kind of taking a peek at some of the rankings at lightweight and going back and looking at dudes who have a couple losses. There's Diego Fajeda. I don't think mm-hmm. he's going to want to take a fight against Diego Fajeda. Tony Ferguson seems like he still wants to be in the mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think a Dan Hooker fight is where he needs to. They just need to make. They're both on a slide. Different ones, though. I mean, mm-hmm. they but they both fought like murderer's row yeah. and kind of came out on the wrong side of it and i mean hooker may i mean if he loses this fight he shouldn't be in the ufc you know and tony tony's tony right now mm. so and they're both good guys name recognition yeah this it's, seeing him get slept like that and seeing how uh, bewildered he looked after he woke up and was leaving the octagon and everything. He he really looked like he didn't know where he was. Uh, he didn't quite know what was going on. That's what really well, Chuck Liddell like it. told him, right? Like yeah. Chuck Liddell's like, oh, I got you, dude. Let's and have a goes, beer. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and which that's crazy too, because then and Chuck the Dell like, was like, he had that swollen drunk face too. It yeah, was really, yeah, yeah. He looked like he got stung by a couple bees. Yeah, dude. And um, he <laughs> he um. It was crazy because he he had been he has been right there where Tony was, and we're just like it didn't make sense. He got knocked out in a crazy ass way, 
he was on the other side of the highlight and kind of like didn't come out on the other side the right way. And he was granite chinned, um, Chuck, and now and so was Tony. And then right after he took that sh- those shots where he was just out, he was chinny like for the rest of his career. He just couldn't take a punch to save his life. And so is that what's going to happen? You know? Yeah, and that's what I'm that concerned about. Hits you, it hits you. It yeah. doesn't like, it doesn't kind of go like, oh, he's a, he's a little chinny. Nah, he's gonna fuck it. He's gonna start taking shots and it's gonna affect him. He's gonna look drunk. Yeah. After a couple of jets, you know. And and it's it sucks. It's a give and take with Tony Ferguson because he looked so great. That was his first round that he's won in a fight since 2019, since he fought Cowboy right. Cerrone. Um, and to see the lights go out like that, there's a lot of questions, or at least for me, that that brings up a lot of questions moving forward. Like, is he going to have the same confidence in his chin now that he's been like truly knocked clean out for the first time in his career, or at least for the first time in the cage? Um, or is he going to start getting uh, or, or becoming chinny, um, where it's just like, nah, we've been there. Like, we get hit now, the lights are going to go out. Um, it's yeah. all speculation. You know, we won't know till we see it. Um, but I do hope that he gets a more uh, appropriate uh, opponent that's a little bit further down in the rankings next time out. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see. Oh, and another thing, um, man, it really was sad. I was talking about how I kind of like started to come around on Tony Ferguson because yeah. leading up to the fight in the press conferences, I mean, it was music to my ears, the things he was saying. Like you mentioned, like right. like the friend you kind of see becoming self-aware. Um, it was a little tough to hear some of the things that that he was saying and and. A lot of fighters, I don't remember if he I mentioned this. He got taken advantage of, just there's no way around it. He got taken yeah. advantage of. of Absolutely, people, man. He got 100% taken advantage of by fighters, by fucking, by fucking, uh, every, I mean, any which way. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, like, it's worse than what we even know. Like, was he taking it? Because he's such a good, uh, a good dude, you know, at least, you know, what, some of the stuff you've heard is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, CTE's crazy. I mean, know? he said it himself in, in one of the pre-fight, uh, the press conferences, like, hey, man, I tripped on a fucking cable and destroyed my leg at Fox. And what did they do? They just yeah. stripped me of my fucking, my uh, interim title. Like, yeah. that is fucked up. And I kind of like, I wasn't so concerned about it when it happened um, because we had yeah. an actual champion at that time. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, right. So you don't feel like you're losing something so big. And it's like, well, it fucking sucks. But he you was don't just don't realize it going back. Yeah, you kind of realize it like, dang. It's like, dude, like. This guy he, got taken advantage of. Fox should have <laughs> taken care of him. Um, and then some of the other things that he was talking about were like dealing with uh, some of the, the UFC staff talking about how um, they were had been chasing him around backstage to make sure that he signed all of his contracts and his and his paperwork and everything and he the one thing that he said that really stuck in my head was like oh i had you guys sweating bullets huh well that's how you make me feel sometimes and that really fucking yeah. hit right to the heart yeah. because it made me re- yeah. remember like they're just fighters like it's they're people they're fuck. they're yeah they're they're people they're um I mean, the fact that they are fighters makes it so that they don't ever want to seem vulnerable. Most fighters, I'm speaking in general terms right now. So when they're having to play hardball with an entity like the UFC, um, they want to do the Conor McGregor thing and play, be loud, be on Twitter. You know what I mean? You don't want to show weakness. But at the end of the day, it should be okay for any of these guys to say, hey, yeah, like I'm actively being fucked over by a multi-billion dollar company and it it's yeah. very, very nerve-wracking and I don't fucking like it. Um, yeah. It's predatory. Um, and before Habib was who he was, you know, and... Tony's kind of a victim of the Habib hype train just jumping on the track when he was like the the top dog, you know. Mm. And uh, he he, you know, there were times where, I mean, a lot of people want to say like, oh, he's great. I mean, the tiramisu is a real fucking thing. Like yeah. <laughs> the motherfucker was eating tiramisu, knowing goddamn well he could not cut weight. And Tony's a fucking professional, fucking everything he can on weight. Will cut weight twice for no reason just yeah. to show that he can't. Yeah, fucking will be there at every fucking thing on fucking time, saying wild shit, you know, getting crazy, and then will fucking fight you till he. You have to literally do what Chandler did to fucking stop this guy, yeah. and fucking the greatest of all time fucking was eating an espresso cake that fucking 
the week before he couldn't make weight. <laughs> you know, and so you want to talk shit like, oh, Kobe's the greatest of all time, blah, blah, blah. That's some pussy shit to fucking do. You know what I mean? Or, or he then he couldn't show up because he couldn't cut weight. Or his kidneys were like shutting down or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, there was. So, I, I already forget all of the multitude of yeah. reasons their fights fell out. I know at one point there was, it was like, it was like T-ball, and I know there was a Ramadan issue for one of them, yeah. at least. And so that's like, it's not, it's not, a lot of that wasn't Tony's fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he can only control so much, and he could have very easily have beaten a guy like Habib on the way up. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of, you know, it would have been real hard to beat um, Habib when he was in his prime, but Tony had the opportunity to catch him on the way up. When Tony was at the peak and Habib was climbing, that's when you want to beat the guy. That's mm-hmm. when you want to beat a guy like Habib when he's down. We'll talk about it later with the situation that's going on upper in that class, but yeah. almost a mirror. <laughs> mirror. It, it's almost like a weird simulation. It really, it very much is with Makashev. Yeah. Yeah, with Makashev and Charles. Because we're talking about fucking Tony 2.0 and we're talking about fucking. I mean, could be, could be junior, be Ratatouille, could be light, could be yeah. Ratatouille, like fucking, like they're, <laughs> they're fucking, you know. Yeah. And so Charles needs to. Well, I mean, we'll talk. I guess we're kind of stepping all over it, but I mean, what do you think? I mean, we'll 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 get more to it. Um, yeah. Like yeah, because like you were saying, we don't want to jump the gun. What do you think yeah. about uh, Charles Oliveira's invitation for Tony Ferguson to go and train with him at Shoot the Box? What do you think about Shoot the Box, Tony Ferguson? This late in his career, Dude, man. That, is, that brings scrambled already. Like, you <laughs> I don't stay out of that room. <laughs> I don't know if he wants any of those gauntlets, like with, yeah. with sparring gauntlets, where they like Dang, put dude. a fresh guy in every two minutes, man. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily fresh, the answer. Like, killer like a dude's like oh it's like fucking puts the cigarette down, puts his gun down, and then like jumps in starts, there with him, like, starts rolling his yeah, fucking yeah. Dude. Um, I, I think it might be a little a little too late for that, and, and also something like we alluded to, like um, Tony Ferguson is an, an eccentric guy, a little bit yeah. of a weird guy, um, and we mentioned it in our last podcast. We're not exactly really sure who he trains with or who the people are close to him. Like we're not, I, I'm not it's very like familiar Bravo, with his. Right? Eddie Bravo is like one of his top coaches for for grappling. I, I guess I don't yeah. remember the last time I've seen Eddie Bravo in his corner or anyone's corner. corner. Right. Um, but like, I, I don't know if he's a guy who works well in, in, when he's not kind of running the show or, or overseeing right. his own camps. I don't know how, how Tony Ferguson looks or operates. And if you drop him at a, a shoot to box or an American top team or any random, you know, gym with a lot of, a lot of heads in there and uh, a lot of other egos walking around, you know, and want him breaking people's ribs, bragging about it on, on uh, right. press conferences. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on regarding uh, Ch- uh, Chandler and Ferguson before we move on to the co-main event? I would just want to see Ferguson against Hooker and Chandler against Connor. Uh, for me, uh, Ferguson and Diaz is my pick. Uh, yeah. I think that's less likely, though, but that that would be if I could wave a magic yeah, wand. That's, that's, that's definitely that's the fight I would make. Uh, moving on to the co-main event of the evening. A really, really exciting fight, man. Um, no, was this how you? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I. We both disgusting. I, I don't even. I. I was dreading talking about this today. Oh, I was looking forward to it. Okay, like talking about it with you. I'm going. I know you. <laughs> no, no, no. But for the right, you're right, dude. Like everything you're gonna say, <laughs> it's gonna be well said, eloquent. The one, I'll, how about I do this? I'll give my. I. I just don't even want to talk about it. It fucking pisses me off. Um, I Pat Berry's a fucking idiot. You're, you're oh an idiot, dude. my god, dude! How when you have idiot, Trevor dog. Whitman in the corner, are you bud butting in? And you can see it on his face. You can see yeah. it on Whitman's face because he's kind of like, yeah. All right, is this guy gonna finish? Like, just go ahead and finish. And then he's like, you hear that? They're fucking, they're doing it because you're doing everything mm-hmm. fucking right. I mean, if Daniel Cormier and Joe Rogan, two people who absolutely love Rose Nama Yunus are saying, this is the worst fucking performance I've ever seen in my fucking life. If those two guys are saying it, then like, that's all bets are off. You, you mm-hmm. know, for sure. Like it's worse than that. And it was worse than that. It was very That's bad. the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just, that's the worst in sports, like in almost all sports. 
the only thing that I can say gave, brought a more visceral feeling out of me was when Anderson was fighting in Abu Dhabi, like running, hiding behind the ref and doing that kind of thing. That made me feel more of like a, what the fuck is yeah. this? That, that was a little extra disrespectful because... Like uh, th- it's weird because I I, sp- I thought specifically of that fight too with Anderson and yeah. Demi and Maya because right. there was it, it was extra fucked up because it's like hey dude what are you doing you're the greatest of all time stop fucking around and kill that guy yeah but then it's also there's a at least a yeah, little bit of entertainment the factor there because you're thinking like you don't see this every day you don't see a guy literally clowning another human being whereas with Rose yeah. and Eunice it was just complete no engagement whatsoever. I, I have a confession to make, though. Here's here's my confession. I'm going to drop the ball. This is okay. breaking news. That this is going to break the internet. Um, I sabotaged Rose Namajunas oh, okay. in this fight. Um, I, I consulted some really, really high-level uh, witches, some, some brujas. Um, I had to fucking slaughter a couple chickens over a fire. And repro- like, really, really dark shit. Yeah. So that I could astral project. That's how J-Lo got the Selena part. Really? Yeah, so I did this so that I could yeah. astral project. We could talk about that off screen or whatever. But... So that I could astral project into the body of Rose Nama Yunus and take over control of her body for mm-hmm. the, the 25 minutes that that fight was happening. So that was actually me in the cage with Carla Esparza controlling uh, Rose Nama Yunus's body and refusing to engage so that Carla Esparza could get an easy win. And Carla Esparza still barely won. She arguably that didn't wasn't an win. Easy win. Uh, did, did you? She didn't win. I, Arguably, didn't win. I don't think she did. I don't think she did. I either. think whatever what happened was fine with me. I don't give a fuck. Hey, you got robbed. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't. I really don't care. Oh, your mental health is fucked up. That kind of sucks. Like, hey, how about not date? How about not uh, uh, be engaged to some fucking groomer? That's an, that's another thing you. I forgot to mention. That's another thing how I forgot to mention. That? Before I gave back control of Rose's body to her. While I was still in her mind, Pat Berry doesn't know that I'm in yeah. there. And as we're walking out of the cage, he and whispered into my up. ear. He said, oh, you you're getting up. a little too old for me. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> I got to yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's really fucking weird. And uh, it's, it's kind of one of those deals where it's Dude, like before... Carla Esparza had every opportunity to shine here because of how little. Like, I think, I think Rose Nama Yunus threw like seven strikes. In the first and second and they round, were glancing jabs. Total. They were glancing jabs from the outside that kind of barely hit uh, as far as the forehead. It was bad and it was weird. Uh, it reminded me of Tyron Woodley and Demi and Maya. Poor Demi and Maya, dude. That guy is on the shit end yeah. of some re- some title fights. Um, well, just no one wants to get on the ground. They know if he even puts like three, fin- if he gets three fingers on you he's going to pull you down and choke you. Yeah. And for guys who don't, guys who don't, who know that they have no answer for that, even though, I mean, at that time, Tyron was not, I, I, it was not like lighting the world on fire with his BJJ, but no, I mean, but he, he had demonstrated throughout that because that, that fight went the distance. And I mean, we knew by, before the end of the first round, okay, Tyron Woodley has no risk of being taken down by Demi and Maya. Right. Um, Demi and Maya presents no threat to him on the feet. At some point, like somebody has, to, like his corner needs to be telling him, "Hey, guy, like you've already shown this guy can't do anything to you. Go out there and finish him because the, you right. have to take some risk. There has to be some. Ele- it's a, called a fight. Like the the goal yeah. isn't to disengage completely. Um, and that's what what Carla, I mean, what uh, Rose Nama Yunus needed to hear. I mean, I mean, that's what Carla Esparza needed to hear too. Her output yeah. was a abysmal um and i get it she was uh, she was probably scared more scared than rose nama Yunus had any right to be um but after the third round after the second round after the third round you're like okay she is really not throwing she's out here like to put on a, a footwork clinic or something yeah um yeah i needed to see a lot more from both girls it's just bad i think That's it's just bad man. it leaves a and it's bad for, stink at the top of the straw weight division it's good for yeah one of the best divisions I mean, they were carrying WMA, the UFC Women's Strawweight Division, for a couple of years, was carrying all of WMA on their back, and then they do this, dude. Yeah. You fucking do this. And it's good for us, because then we get to see, like, more than likely it's going to be Joanna and uh, Zhang. 
Yeah, yeah. They're basically and, fighting for the interim, then they'll go take it from Carla. Yeah, because there's no way Carla walks out of the she octagon no alive chance. against either of those girls. Enjoy your wedding month. Yeah, no, it's... And then you're going to get fucked up. Oh, and you know what? I mean, I, I do got to say, like, that is, like, pretty serendipitous for Carla Esparza to, like... Because I knew she was getting married after the fight. I didn't realize it was literally one week later. So, I mean, how perfect is that? Like, And I was kind of taking that into consideration while I was controlling Rose Nami Yunus's bodies. I thought, you know what? I'm not, I, I got to make it not look like I'm throwing this fight because I don't want to raise any suspicions, but I don't right. want to mark this girl up too bad, you know, so right. she could walk into her, her, wedding. Uh, her wedding without a black eye and Can't being champion. Um, but yeah, Carla Esparza looking at the division and the girls who were going to be nipping at her heels like you already mentioned, Yana and Jacek, Zhang Wei Li, Dana White had already much conf- uh, pretty much confirmed that that's going to be for a number one contender. Um, Jessica Andrade made her triumphant return to strawweight. You got yeah. Marina Rodriguez. Um, Who should beat the shit? Throw Marina. Oh, why you mention it? Marina and Rose just fucking sign it already. If it, that's not signed yet, like put that fight together. Like those two need to just fight. I hadn't considered that, but that is a fun fight. Um, I was I was kind of feeling like okay, uh, Joanna is going. Joanna and Zhang is happening next month in June. I was kind of thinking it's very easy for Marina to get lost in the mix right now because, yeah. I mean, if there was no other options, nobody's going to complain if you put Jessica Andrade right in there. Um, not uh, now, yeah, not now. Everyone would be totally fine with that. Um, but I feel like it's just going to be... I, I have a bad feeling that Marina Rodriguez is going to get lost in the mix, so I almost feel like they should just give her a title shot. Um, yeah, because if 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 Yuana and Zhang Weili have another fight of the year contender, like straight banger, those girls are going to need some time off before they go yeah. into... Well, it is Carla Esparza. Anyways... <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think I think uh, it, it was a disappointing fight, but it did make that division a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Everybody knows, if you've been listening to this program for a little while, that I don't like Rose Namajunas. I celebrate her downfall. Uh, I'm really happy that she's not at the top because um, I feel like she doesn't fight often enough, and she's very inconsistent. I know it's easy for me to, to talk shit and, and just like go to Rose <laughs> Namajunas. <laughs> But hey, she's very inconsistent. Face, you, dude, you, don't, you, it, dude. you don't know what Rose is. I've never seen your chest out this far. <laughs> I've never seen your just chest out, fucking shoulders back. This is like that verbal meme, dude. Verbal meme. Like, <laughs> homie in the, homie in the um, pajama pants and the hoodie is like at my sister's wedding. And then like dude in the tux and he's like at Rose Nama Yunus's downfall. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's you, dude. I mean, yeah, uh, I, I'm a, the, I, I stand uh, Ioana and Jacek pretty hard. So obviously yeah. now the stars are aligned more than they ever were before for her to get. Because, I mean, nobody was probably thinking like, as long as Rose is at the top of the division holding the strap, it's pretty hard for Ioana and Jacek to work herself into another title fight. Or, uh, I mean, even if, if Dana does bend over backwards for her, it's hard to get people excited for that because she's already 0-2 to Rose. So, um, yeah, it's it's a little bit of like a three-headed Mentally, monster. Mentally, that's got to be huge for her in the next fight because, I, I mean, she's a fucking pro's pro, one of the greatest female fighters to ever there. But to have that in the back of your head, like, I can come out here, beat the shit out of Whaley, and then still probably might not get a title shot because the home girl beat me twice. Now it's like, I can fuck. It's right there. I just need to go out and do handle my business, and I got a title shot. That's true. I'm sure it's a lot easier to get out of bed when you know it's like, whoa. Exactly. Okay, it's it's open now, uh, and I was watching uh, the Joanna and Jacek like watch along fight companion like watch party thing too, and she even said he as would. much. Um, he would, he would. <laughs> uh, and and then it was also like a, a good forty seconds ahead of the stream that I was watching, so they were uh, literally spoiling every fight for me as I was watching. Uh, but, but it's you fine. Care. You were um, tipping in the super chat or whatever. Shit, like, no, uh, but five dollar simp. She said as much. Shit, nah, she, like twice. That's it. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have the option, dog. No, uh, bucks, dog. She she said as much when they announced the the decision. She said, "I'm yeah. I'm going to go to the fucking gym right now." Um, yeah. So I think that that's that's palpable. That's were you that's in true. the chat? Show your feet. 
Yeah, what kind of shoes? The camera was really far away from her feet. Uh, though. I did think it was hilarious that they had Karolina Kovokovich there also hanging uh, out with them. Right? She didn't even get I a spot not. on the couch. She was literally sitting on the uh, floor. Dang. But yeah, man. Uh, I mean, surprised <laughs> we talked about this fight as long as we did. Um, yeah, I didn't want it's to. A weird I, one, I was like straight up like, I, I get Rose in there against Marina Rodriguez because they're going to bang it out. Um, she's not really going to let Rose do that. No. Yeah. And then, um, who cares what Carla as far as it does? I really don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't care. Like she won or whatever. Like, Hey, that's great. And then what really sucked was, uh, the gals that fought earlier, uh, and I shouldn't, uh, the one that looked like Dolph Lundgren, um, was like, this is hard for women. It's hard for women to fight and it being a woman. And then you're just like, yeah okay and that one was kind of like a whatever fight anyway so the norma then, dumont fight and Mason, yeah norma Mason dumont Jason, yes yeah. Mason, yeah Mason Jason, and then and then there gets she's getting booed and she's like you don't know what it's like to be a female in the sport and it's hard and then you're just kind of like okay okay go that and then these two ladies i had like okay then they put it's a title shot you know you're a co-main event they put you ahead of what just happened mm -hmm. like tony ferguson and chandler like that's wild. You know what I mean? That's like the fight of the night. Any other, you know, you'd want to see that. So you're just like, Ooh, this is like, you're kind of like, you have no other choice than to be like, kind of like, this is going to be sick. Hell like, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think Rose is going to just come out and just dance all over this chick. And then they don't. And then you're like, Oh man, it's, it's hard to be a female. Like we well, have the shot. You had it right there. Rose had the shot to be like, you know, I legitimized my, my title reign. I had a blemish on my, on my, on my record and I just took care of her in front of everybody, ruined yeah. her wedding, everything. And I'm going to call, I'm going to, you know, do my little post fight and look sweet. And you did it. And you cry a little bit. You looked terrible. Tear -jerk and, you, and you were bitter and she had, was bitter, upset about the fact that she put on yeah. a shit performance in the post fight. Like why the fuck's everybody so mad? What? I can't have a defensive fight. Like, what are you talking about? A defensive Shut fight. Up. Carla Esparza is there to be your highlight reel. Like this should yeah, have been like, that's literally fucking, what they did. Yeah. That's literally what they did. And Dana was watching the Canelo fight the whole time. I don't blame like anybody for watching. I, you know what? That's yeah, something I forgot I did, to ask. I watched it on my phone. Uh -huh. Yeah. I watched the Canelo cause, uh, uh, we we're watching it on ESPN, which I always do. But, uh, so I'll mention it now. Um, but, during the during after the after the first round, I was like, "Oh yeah, what the fuck? What's going on with Canelo?" <laughs> and like, I never looked up, and yeah, I didn't have to. Yeah, it's terrible, dude. It was a tough one. Um, we will leave it at that. Um, there will be a lot more st exciting stuff on the horizon happening at Strawweight, um, but that was probably the most piss poor example of it. Uh, and I mean, many people have said it. We don't probably don't have to repeat it, but easily probably the worst uh, championship fight in the history of the of the, the sport. biggest advertisement for illegal streaming <laughs> that's a good one um but luckily we were we were saved by the main event um which delivered and then some charles Oliveira doesn't get to defend his title technically uh we could start with the whole um the 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 whole Wait, weight cut De debacle um, before we get into the fight. Charles Oliveira shows up the day before, weighs in half a pound over, 0.5 pounds. Um, to anybody who doesn't know the significance of that, there's no grace pound or, or, or grace zone for uh, title fights. You have to be on the button. Everybody else in a non-title fight, you get an extra pound. So if you were supposed to weigh in at 155, 156 is all good, but not for champs or not for challengers for the title also. Um, he was given an hour to lose the additional half a pound, took the full hour, barely came back in time, and didn't lose anything. Um, still looked genuinely surprised. Um, you kind of alluded a little bit to in our chat that you thought that there might have been some, some fishy shit going on with the scales. Some other people were mentioning the same thing, some other fighters on yeah. social media. Norma Dumont was the only other fighter that missed weight, and I believe she missed by a pound and a half. Um, so she had something to say about it. There looked like there was a little bit of Brazilian clickiness because it seemed to only be Brazilian people who were kind of saying like, yeah, there was something fucked up with the scales. What's your take on it? Do you think that uh, Charles Oliveira just pulled the weight here? Like... No. And what, 
like you were talking about how it's only important in a, in a title, like a title fight as far as being on the button. But I think something like seven fighters were a half pound off of what they normally weighed in at, like on that entire card, like, and that did get the grace portion of it and just didn't come up or they had, they either mentioned it or they were half a pound off of, yeah. Or they were a half a pound off of what they would normally come in at. Like they always kind of come in. I think, uh, was it the, uh, was it Randy? What's his name? Randy Brown, right? Yeah. Dude who fought Rudy. chaos. Yeah. He was like a, he was like a, a pound, half a pound off. Um, the, the only heavyweights that fought were like a half a pound off. Normally it doesn't even really matter, mm -hmm. but they always kind of come in at this weight and, um, uh, they came in about a half a pound heavier than they normally would. So everyone was just kind of like, what the hell? And Charles's reaction to it when he's like up there and then he's like hands up mm -hmm. and then he doesn't understand English. So like he, he's kind of just like, okay, like, thank you. We'll see you. See you out there. And then they're like, no, dude, no, thank <laughs> you. this shit's bad. And then his face, he's, his eyes were just like, what? Like, yeah. what the hell? That was so genuine you know, confusion. That was not acting. Yeah. Like yeah. That was not like, cause I, we've seen that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then another fucking Habib deal, like, you know, that there's, he had fucking weird weigh-ins. Him and Cormier did that shit, grabbing the towels and everything else. Like that shit's not funny. They were joking about it. Like, I think, Cormier said, hey, throw him a towel or something like mm -hmm. that, like on Twitter, right? It's like, that's not fucking funny, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not funny at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, this guy fucking worked his ass off. Like, you can tell there's probably, there's literally nothing in between his skin and the muscle. Like, there's there's nothing there. There's nothing for him to cut. And then to go, and, and I think I mentioned this to you, and it's under way different circumstances, but, like, I've been watching my weight a lot more uh, recently. Like, I weigh myself every fucking morning, and sometimes I'll weigh in, and like, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, okay. And then I'll go and like, you know, make some breakfast for the fam and uh, take a shower and then weigh in. And I'm like a pound less, you know, and I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I get it. My body's <laughs> way different than Charles over. Like I'll just, you know, hands up, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're just listening along, but you know, uh, Definitely big not boys like us, that, but we could hawk a loogie and we'll yeah. lose a half a pound, but yeah, it was lose a half a pound. Yeah. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so to, for someone who has saunas and, you know, all these different things like available to him to not lose a half a pound, it's, you know, it's that's weird. It's weird. And, uh, I get, I'm a super conspiratorial type person anyway. Like I just don't trust anything. I don't trust anything about the UFC, like what they tell you, what they say, or what they're doing, good or bad. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I don't think they get enough credit for what they do, and sometimes they're just terrible. It's just fucking what they did, Tony, is terrible fucking shit. They'll do dirty shit. So to create this situation where, like, you know, hey, Charles, is he's going to understand. He's a champ. Like, you know, I wouldn't put it past him. Like, if they told, if they said, like, yeah, we kind of, we kind of knew this might have happened. We knew he, he likes to weigh in right on the, he likes to kind of play fast and loose with being close to it. Then, you know, maybe we do reset the scales beforehand and we don't let anybody know. Yeah. Or maybe we do fuck with the back. It, Cause it's, mm -hmm. I guess the main thing that I heard was, it was the, the one backstage was a half pound off of the one that they actually use. So when he got on there, he's like, okay, I'm good. I don't have to do anything else. Right. Yeah, my understanding was a, a, a couple of fighters. I think um, Carnalosi um, yep. had said that like somebody tried to recalibrate the scale the night before to change it to kilograms or something, and yeah. wasn't able to work and left it uh, 0.5 pounds off. And for my money, that's man, just the commission. The commission should be on there with like yeah. little weights, like to the fucking, mm -hmm. you know, because if you're going to be like that, taking the dude's money. Yeah, you know, because a lot of these probably lost. If, yeah, because you know they had, um, uh, I won't say anything like mean or whatever, but you know, like they have these guys like to the penny, like mm -hmm. what you oh missed weight, well, we'll just take this, right. and you're not going to get that. Sorry, yeah. you know, with that same energy, you need to be like making sure the scale like. You know, that no one's messing with. There should be two fucking scales and no one fucking touches them. 
until they need to be touched and someone's what a com somebody w on that commission's watching it as it's happening not like someone gets to fuck with the dial like, yeah that's, there's that's there's funny. no reason that the backstage scale that they use to to check their weight before they go in officially weigh in shouldn't yeah. also be a commission scale that has just as yeah. much oversight and, and and everything um and I, I i know that i don't know if it was the commission or the ufc that that reported this but they are the plan is moving forward they are always going to have a security detail by both scales now um so that tells me that there might have been some some chicanery going on because it's like you don't decide to to make that call unless you hey just guys, want this to never why be wasn't question that the protocol again. the whole time also the guy ah. the guy who is is getting that skill we've seen so many times when other fighters yeah. are weighing in where that shit is still going up and down there's a picture and they'll call someone it. posted a picture right mm -hmm. someone posted a picture or a video of uh charles weighing in and then it they kind of call it and then it stops when it and it comes back and he's on and they're like, wait, you call it, you kind of jumped the gun there, dude. That shit's like jumping. Like you kind of like had it in your head, what you wanted already. Yeah. You got it and you go, yep, there it is. See, we told you. And and we've seen cases like with, uh, like Khabib when he, he almost missed weight for his last fight against, uh, Justin Gaethje. I believe there was a little bit of like a close call there, but, uh, he was on the towel, right? He was doing the car meet thing, right? Like holding the towel. I, I don't think he actually exploited that. They, he ended up making weight, but, um, yeah. I know there was a lot of controversy around that because people also took the video of the scale moving up and down yeah. and the guy who's reading it calls it really really early and that shit yeah. looked like it was definitely going to dip again like he almost was almost like he knew what he wanted i to, think to call. <laughs> i think that the guy who's reading that scale has the privilege of just deciding half a pound doesn't fucking matter and he decided yeah. half a pound yeah. matters in this case and i'm gonna fuck over charles Oliveira. and this is one thing that i mentioned to talking with people like i was talking to my sister watching the fight right and she doesn't watch any of the she doesn't care she doesn't give a fuck and she's like well, well why does that happen why would that happen because she, she does like professional baseball she likes uh, football and like you really like there's there's weird shit that happens you know almost scripted shit sometimes but she, the thing you don't really see as much is especially with the, the they take fucking cheating and like shit like that fucking serious. That's a huge reason why these guys get paid a lot. Like in in baseball, uh, they had like that crazy. It was like way back in the day. Like uh, these 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 players weren't making any fucking money, and some mobsters were like, "Hey, we'll pay you fucking twenty five grand a head if you just throw the game." But they made such little money that if I get caught, who gives a fuck? But if I don't, I'm gonna triple my fucking purse. I'm gonna get paid anyway. And so who get so with MMA where you have these guys not really making all that much, they're very criminally underpaid. You yeah. can yeah, you can like they're like, well, I'm gonna get 150 bucks to fuck with the scale, mm. <laughs> or 150 thousand dollars to fuck with the scale mm. because uh, maybe it was someone who had a lot of money on uh, on Gaethje. Maybe someone who wanted or someone who had a lot of money on like a few like who knows what but it just like it leaves that kind of that kind of shit open you make for... a really good point like, that is true like there's it's like it i know to a lot of people they'll hear some of these payouts for mma fighters and hear like a, a couple hundred grand tops for, yeah. for certain fighters and think like well that's no in that's not an insignificant amount of money but if yeah. we're talking uh you know putting people in the situations where they could um, reap like financial gain from, from some illegal shit, some stuff like that. Like it's just gets a lot easier to do that. Um, or it's tenfold what you're going to make. Exactly. Oh, I just had to stand there and take a fucking punch and then I'll make $4 million. People will get a lot more willing to do that kind of stuff. I yeah. mean, I, t I took over the mind of a straw weight champion fighter. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? And if she was making a couple million, I probably wouldn't have fucked with it like that. But yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have killed that go. Your, your grandma's goal would still be alive today. Yeah. The stakes just didn't feel high enough for me to not do it. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's get into the actual fight though. Uh, as it turned out, all of this uh, weight, missing like debacle didn't really matter um it certainly didn't it look did. like he it lost mattered. so much money it makes me mad man he lost a lot of money dana white said he's still going to give him his pay-per-view points thankfully well, that's because good. if he hadn't he would have lost hey, thanks a, like seven figures potentially 
Um, so Good you're things. right. If 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 he hadn't uh, decided, and, and Good thing it was a pay per view with Rose now Muniz, Carla, Carla Esparza <laughs> as the co main event. Yeah, but you know, those I'm suckers sure that helped a lot. But those suckers already it's paid for the tickets, though. It's not like they. Uh, it's not like they canceled their pay per view watching while well, watching that fight. You know. So. Yeah. But it, yeah, you're right out. though. It's definitely not one that's gonna. Uh, bring a lot of people uh, around the television to, to tune in for that co-main event. I mean, they're not all me. That's um, like me at the at the dispensary, and like my order is like thirty eight ninety six, and then I'm like, go ahead and put the change in the bucket there, sweetie. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> go ahead and take the tip. Huh? It's like a dollar and two cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks, Dana. What did you think about the way that this fight played out? Uh, was this how you pictured it? I, I'll yes, jump in I front of you it. just a little bit and say this okay. is exactly how I saw the fight play out, but the floor is yeah. yours. No, yeah, I mean, we, we said it. And then he was throwing the knees in the clinch. He worked off the clinch. Uh, he caught he caught him in some, like, really, he, caught, he just was throwing those knees to his body. He was a mean fuck. He's a fucking mean motherfucker. Charles Oliver is fuck. He's so nice. He's dancing afterwards. Everybody's dyed blonde. He's like, he seems like such a sweet guy, but he is fucking mean when they're fighting. Like, that is some mean, awful shit. And he, I don't know what the hell it is, but he's getting so much stronger. He is so strong. I mean, he's a he's a built guy. He's an MMA fighter. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. he has all, but he has that sneaky strength yes. where it's like, damn. He's God like, damn. It's like, he figured out how to put extra torque on his punches. Yeah, some, some something, yeah. Um, and he it's scary like, b- because he is growing. Fight every every single fight. He's still improving, even though he's already yeah. just got to the top of the mountain, and he's improving in different areas. It's crazy. Like yeah. coming into you know his title fight, we're over here thinking like, oh, he he gets hit too hard. You know, he's he's right. not durable enough. He's 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 too uh, he's too hittable. Well, he gets hit and he keeps coming. He's like, no, that's not a fucking problem anymore. Yeah. Uh, later on, uh, he's a quitter. He, like he doesn't uh, he, he's yeah. not he doesn't have enough killer instinct. She proves us wrong again here a guy uh, who who's called him a quitter has quit twice and championship fights I, I, on camera you quit yeah yeah, that's better, huh? yeah and now i mean we've seen this this isn't exactly anything new um we, we've known that his stand-up has been evolving he's becoming a much right. more dynamic striker he's has a lot more weapons he looks just so much more comfortable on the feet and now there's power behind it it's not so much that it's like oh yeah i'm willing to stand in the pocket and throw with you it's like i'm willing to stand in the pocket and throw and if i land i'm going to fuck you up yeah you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna, gonna have a bad time um yeah. and it's crazy he's he's becoming a dynamo he's mixing the martial arts so well if yep. you if he he senses any bit of of uh you know, it, it, anywhere the fight goes, he's ready to transition, uh, and those transitions on the floor were just so sick, dude. He went so from that good. inverted triangle, immediately adjusted, let Justin uh, Gaethje think that he was reversing the position or getting out. That's totally fine. I'll take your fucking back. I'll choke you out. Um, and it's starting to be a bad look for Justin Gaethje because exactly yeah. the openings that I predicted, which is that Justin Gaethje was going to be overreaching he's going to be overexerting himself on these punches and he was man he was throwing so hard that he was is almost like losing his balance and falling over on himself i um, i was i was like doing that whole thing showing how hard he fucking <laughs> punches dude <laughs> or like all ex- like, you know it's yeah, cr- yeah dude you're 100 percent right man i mean I, I i don't think you and i like cracked the code of like how the pyramids were made with our with our like how the how we think the fight goes down yeah. but at the same time like we almost kind of cracked the fucking code as far as like how that shit's gonna fucking happen like and yeah I but think it's not hard thing... to see though yeah yeah and I... it, what makes it even better is to overcome that shit they're like hey you're not gonna get paid with you know you're not gonna really get paid what it was you're not the champ anymore so go ahead i, I would i mean it was water dude, if, water off of his back, and he just decided, I'm still yeah, going to go style on this guy. It doesn't matter to me whatsoever. If I can't get in, if, like, I show up, if, like, I'm on my way to work, I'm at the gas station, they don't have the energy drink I want, like, the rest of the day's fucking ruined for me. And this guy's just like, yeah, you're not the champ anymore. And you're, like, to deal with that mentally, to deal with all that shit, and then 
to just fucking put on a fucking clinic in front of everybody is a, that's amazing. I think for me, and and you make a good point. Uh, a, a lot of people were pissed were were picking uh, Charles Oliveira. Um, you probably wouldn't think so if you were watching some of the uh, the pre fight press conferences and stuff. It was a yeah. very pro Justin Gaethje crowd, but that shouldn't be a huge surprise. They were in in, in Phoenix, and I know that's kind of like his old stomping grounds. Um, so it, Justin Gaethje had a lot of support going into this one, and it's understandable why. Uh, we were talking about with Michael Chandler a little while ago. Justin Gaethje, when he came into the UFC, made a huge splash. Um, I mean, he, he has his fair share of losses in the UFC uh, yeah. and he keeps adding to that list, but he's never in a not exciting fight. Uh, he right. always comes, he always brings the violence. I think he is fighting to his detriment, though, and I was a little bit surprised that I would be so low on Justin Gaethje coming out of this fight. Do you think that I'm being a little bit too harsh on Justin Gaethje or is like Charles Oliveira just that good? Like, I shouldn't be worried about I think Justin he's that Gaethje. good. I think he's that good. Gaethje did what didn't do anything we didn't think. It's not like he tried to take him down a bunch of times and it didn't work. It's like, why did you do that? He did what he said he was going to do. He's like, I'm going to fucking stand right there. I'm going to swing. I'm going to throw out of my shoes. Or, well, they're not even wearing shoes, but yeah. I'm going to fucking swing fucking hard. And you're just going to have to get out of the way. And, okay, he got out of the way and fucking choked him out. And that's the thing that happens all the time. I, I think Gaethje will be back you know, up around title contention in a year, year and a half. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't really see it being too, too hard for him. I mean, what, what, he's going to fight Poirier again or something, right? More than likely it'll be him and Poirier. I think Poirier just posted uh, a little bit before we started recording um, that he has a fight for this summer. Um, but hasn't uh -oh. confirmed against who or, or what he shaved. And Gaethje head, didn't, but... I mean, Gaethje didn't take any fucking, I mean, we kind of expected he would take a lot of damage. Any fight after he fight, he's one of those fighters where it's like if he takes some time off after a fight, like you kind of get it because mm -hmm. he does some wild shit. But I mean, if he was going to lose, the way he lost was probably best case scenario for him as far as getting right back out there. Because if he would have went through a war and fucking, you know, did the Gaethje thing and then lost, then that kind of would have sucked. But getting choked out pretty early on gives you kind of like leaves it open to where you didn't take you that's a guys good like him guys like him don't get to get that kind of fucking chance you know yeah. what i mean so he needs to take that and be like okay i didn't get my fucking head beat in this time let's fucking jump out there and get this fucking because i mean nothing you just gotta start winning like yeah. nothing nothing fixes that smell like winning you know it's a very, very good point. Yeah, I mean, you look back at his uh, the kind of damage that he sustained in the Michael Chandler fight, going back a little bit further, his fights with Dustin right. Poirier. Uh, Michael Johnson clipped him. Like, he right. is a, a kill-or-be-killed type of fighter. Um, so, yeah, this is... And that's something that's concerned me. Like, those guys, you know, when you become that, that wrestle boxer, um, that sprawling brawler, that's really, really effective, and some guys can really use that and, and make a, a really... Um, uh, relevant career out of it, but when the wheels fall off, when you're that kind of fighter, if they fall hard, yeah, you um, turn into Chad Mendes. Yeah, like that. The that brick of a head of his is going to start cracking soon. Um, but you're right. This this isn't a fight that necessarily contributed to that very much, despite mm -hmm. the fact that he got dropped. But uh, good Charles guy Charles Oliveira was like, "Hey, I'll just just go to bed, and then this is mercy. you know you can keep keep uh, providing for your family, you know." What do you think is on the horizon for Charles Oliveira now? I mean, he called out Conor McGregor, but I mean, really, anything is on deck for him. Uh, what the UFC knows what they wanted because they fucked him out of the half a pound to get it. He's it's going to be the four. I guarantee you, they want Conor in there somehow. They can't justify Conor fighting Oliveira at, from what Oliveira's done, and then to say like, okay, now Conor McGregor, like you can't, you can't do that. You can't you do should. that. Even you yeah, you, you just do. that's just disrespectful. They would. I wouldn't be surprised if they do it tomorrow, but you know that that can't happen. That just can't. I'll be I'll be I I'll be mad and I'll watch it. Uh, yeah. and I'll probably pay to watch it, right. but at the same time, like it's like this doesn't feel right. But I think they're going to do like a four man deal where like Chandler looks so good against or that looked amazing what he did. He took Tony's best shot and then gave one of the best shots of all time. 
So it'll be Tony and or uh, Chandler and uh, McGregor, and then it'll be um, Charles and Makachev, because I mean they're both on, and then Charles really needs to fight Makachev now. Yes, I don't want you, anything to get in the way of that fight. Yeah, because if you keep fucking around and taking like you take the Connor fight, like okay that's great, but what if something happens to Islam? And he can't fight for like a year and a half. Like he fucks up his Achilles tendon, or you know, Charles has you know Charles has some some happen with his eye, and like he has to vacate. You know, like we've seen it happen with with Tony and Habib. Like don't, don't fuck around, mistake. just fucking get in there and do it now. Yeah, and it it makes more sense for Charles to do it now because if he fucks around and takes some money fights, if he fights Volkanovski or whatever the fuck, because I would love to see him just fight. Uh, Makachev fucking win the fucking title then fight Volk. You know what I mean? That'd be what I would love to fucking see. Yes. Volk beats the shit out of fucking Holloway and then it's like, fuck, you just gotta fucking do it. And that would yeah. be amazing. That's what I want to see. I 100% want to see that. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm, I'm right along there with you. I'm a big proponent of, like, I, 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 I get the double champ status, but I really, I kind of miss when guys were content to clean out their division before yeah. they started chasing a second belt, man. There's a lot of guys who, there's not a lot of opportunities going around in the UFC, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really like... Uh, Abu Dhabi, Charles and, Charles and fucking Islam Abu Dhabi. Do it. Dana White's already pretty much said, uh, it sounds like, that they want to do uh, uh, Makashev versus Benil Dariush, which I don't like. Um, I think it's waste of time it's fucked up to be yeah. to be neil dariush but um like you said you just got to do it because by a, a a wide consensus islam makashev is the second best lightweight in the world he pa he's passed the eye test at least with me um yeah. i i'm kind of shifted now like before i'd say it was very very close but before this justin gaethje fight i would have still picked islam makashev to beat uh, charles Oliveira. Yeah. I can't confidently say that anymore. And that makes this fight even that much more exciting for me is that it's getting very, very close to a pick -em. And not even a pick -em, actually. I, I favor Charles Oliveira. Yeah. I just think he, he's got more tools. Um, I think his striking is more refined. I think he's more dangerous on the ground. It might not be a controlling grappling game, but it's yeah. a dangerous grappling game. It is a, I'm going to take your arm home with me or put you to sleep kind of grappling game. Whereas Islam Makashev is just going to want to try and control Charles Oliveira if he Can't even chooses off. to engage him on the ground. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a super exciting fight, and um, Charles I, needs to do it now because if you let if you let uh, Islam go into a fight and another five rounder against a guy the caliber of Dariush and kind of gain that experience, you know, have a big kind of have a big win, and and really like kind of add to his own personal like inner game of like I am the fucking best. I just beat Benil Dariush on fucking mm. pay per view in Abu Dhabi. Like I'm I am that fucking good. And then go in against Charles. Now he's been off for a while. Yeah. He's you know he's I, I mean there's been a little bit of a layoff. He, he's he's really beaten. I mean who's the last guy he's beat? Bobby Green. I mean everybody loves Bobby Green, but like that's not you really haven't. Yeah. done much and every like he's he passes the eye test because that's kind of the only test he's had he's been able to pass is true. the eye test you know fucking right, right now dan Charles hooker is, and bobby green are his two like highest ranked wins at lightweight and that's not saying much now mm -hmm. maybe a couple months ago that was like oh well now it's like well that dan hooker win has not aged very well the Dan Hooker win as an H will, and then it turns out Bobby Green was just about getting money yeah. and just like throwing himself out there, riding a wave. Yeah. It, the, the, it, that's done now. So what are you doing? And to your point about waiting too long and letting Islam get even more comfortable and letting yeah. him grow even more as a fighter. I mean, uh, Benil Dariush is not the guy who you want for him to have to fight before he goes up against you because that's... I mean, it's still a far cry from the kind of grappling threat that Charles Oliveira presents. But Benil right. Dariush is no is no chump, and compared to a lot of the other guys who are in that lightweight top five, 
who are a bunch of wrestle boxers. You got your mm-hmm. Justin Gaethys, your Chandlers, your Poiriers. Benil Dariush is going to give Islam a different look, and he's going to help Islam grow that much more if Islam can get past him. He's going to have a good camp. He's going to have a focused camp where he's like, I'm fighting a championship caliber guy. I mm-hmm. need to go through this. And then he's going to – every little thing that on in Islam's career right now is a learning experience that he's going to take into him, into the fight he has with – in his championship fight, everything he got. So why not give him the opportunity to make the mistake yeah. of not kind of knowing what a championship fight camp is, not kind of knowing what the press obligations are for a championship fight. Charles knows all that shit. That's he true. knows what the Charles, what the press obligation is. Like Volkanovski says, like that shit is hard. Yeah. Like I hate being a champ because like I wake up at fucking because I'm in Australia. I wake up at fucking four forty five in the morning until fucking four in the afternoon and i'm answering calls from my like korean television i'm answering calls from you know i i i guess islam, islam never really had to deal with that so and it's, it's like making a fighter doing a completely separate second job that they're not used right. to i mean all the fighters do media to some extent but that main event that championship media is uh, different I mean, we yep. saw it recently with, uh, I mean, on a much smaller scale, but just to, to kind of like illustrate how much it can affect fighters, Amanda Limos. Um, right. I, I thought she was very obviously affected by the extra media that she had to do because I saw some of the uh, the backstage interviews and stuff, and she looked petrified to have like a microphone in front of her face and a camera in front of her face constantly. And she went out and got fucking like strangled, like in less than a minute. Like it's, I I think it was palpable. It was, it was a legitimate effect. And then that time is 10 when there's a title on the line and you're under those extremely bright lights for my money. Also um, another reason I think that like before Charles Oliveira goes chasing a, 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 a second title or, um, a multi multi weight championship. If he beats Islam Makashev, for me, that's pretty much cleaning out the division. There's a lot of guys in the horizon that are coming up. That 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 next generation of lightweight, and in a way, Islam Makashev is like the spearhead of that. Actually, right. he's not even part of the old guard, but. Right now, Charles Oliveira has pretty much beaten the old guard at lightweight. He's beaten those established guys, Gaethje, uh, Poirier, Chandler. Um, and now there's there's the next crop of guys that are on the come up. You got your uh, Rafael Fazives. You got your Mateusz Gamrats and stuff like that. There's these there's these guys who are, who are coming up. And um, it might th- none of them are like right there knocking on the door yet. I think they're right. all they're all potentially going to be title contenders in the future, but they still have a few fights ahead of them. So get that Islam Makashev out, fight out of the way. Give the, the division way. some 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 time and some room to to grow. It's just it, good business it, all it, the way around. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a no brainer. But and also, I kind of don't really buy that Conor McGregor wants to get himself into a title fight because that's going to lock him down. Conor McGregor, yeah. like I'm sure he's he's perfectly content with the money that he's making, but um, anytime he's up, his his contract is up. That's time for to negotiate. That's a time where he could make some moves. Um, if he gets into a title fight and he he doesn't want to not win, if he manages to to beat Charles Oliveira, then he's a champion and he's 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 held to the championship clause. Right. And now he just has a, a repeating, you know, as for as long as he's champion, he's stuck with in the UFC. Yes, I don't really Conor. buy that he wants that. Um, I think there's a lot of big money making ventures for Conor McGregor outside the UFC. I don't know how many fights he has on his contract right now, but. He's I have already to believe playing it. that negotiation hardball. Like, well, I like kind of the weight I'm at. I like being big. Like, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I do. I don't know. Right. You know, goddamn well, if they give him a good fight for good money, he'll fucking lose the weight. He's he's yeah. a competitive motherfucker. He's gonna do it. Yeah. But he's he's fucking. We talked about it. He's fucking smart, dude. He's so he's like, I, I like the weight I'm at. And I'm pretty yeah. sure that that guy already gets pay per view points, even if he's not a champion, because that's the even only if way he's that fighting in the showcase fight. Mm-hmm. Even if he's not, if even if he's not the main event, he's gonna get pay per view points. Because and everyone who is on that pay per view should say like, yeah, give it to him. I want I want to fight on a Conor pay per view. Absolutely, because this is gonna make me uh, a lot better. But I I think I think I don't I would not bat an eye. I don't think anybody hardcore. I don't think a hardcore, a casual would would even care that if Connor just 
fights Chandler at 170 just to kind of knock the rust off. You know, not have to go so hard on his knee conditioning to get down. And then if he beats Chandler at 170, fucking go let him fight. Fucking let him fight the winner of Makachev because that'd be so cool because he's going to fight. Everyone wants to see him fight uh, Charles. Anyway, Charles wants to fight him. And then fighting Nislam for a fucking title, like, why, why wouldn't he? That's what, that's pretty fucking badass so he's kind of in a win-win there that and you make a really good point because that's another thing that's a little bit of a hold up for me is as much as i don't i don't want to see conor mcgregor get awarded with another like unearned title shot like far from earned like the dude's on on a losing streak right now right who am i to punish charles Oliveira and say no you don't get that payday Charles Oliver, right. Oliveira wants it. He's he's he pretty darn it. close to cleaning yeah. out his division. Reward him with a Conor McGregor fight so he can make that fat stack um, and take it back to the favelas and, and, and help his community out. You know what I mean? Because like, in a way, if you deny him that, you yeah, you are you're punishing Charles Oliveira. So it's uh, it's a great. They're area. punishing his. They're punishing his. They're his punishing his neighborhood. Like yeah. they, <laughs> he could be handing up Picanhas right now if mm-hmm. he fought Conor McGregor on the skewer, so. dude. Yeah, dude. Half moons. Cut it off the green, yeah. uh, against the green. Um, is there uh, any other any other talking points uh, surrounding the main event that you wanted to touch on? Maybe looking forward a little bit to see what might be next for Justin Gaethje. I'm not sure if we discussed that. Oh, uh, man, I think. Well, hopefully, hopefully Gaethje's opponent or the po- opponent that Poirier is talking about is Gaethje. I would love to see that fight. I, I don't care. I'd love to see that fight again. It's a good rematch. I think it makes it's a good rematch. It makes sense for everybody. He's not going to. Neither of them are going to fight Nate. Neither of them are going to fight uh, Dariush. So just fucking do it. I would like to see, um, you know, some of those other guys who were on the come up get a good fight against Justin Gaethje now. Um, I don't yeah. think Justin Gaethje wants to, to take that kind of a step down, but I mean, I would love to see him against an Armand Sarukian. You know, it's, it's great to see those kind of dudes get an opportunity um, yeah. and, and knock on the door against a, a guy that's been sitting in the top five for a while like that. Um, I don't think that Justin Gaethje necessarily, that's, that's kind of like a selfish pick on my part. Yeah. I, think, I don't think Justin Gaethje's necessarily like lost You're in such a way get, that he's, yeah. 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 You're trying to get me to nut on, camera i just i just want those guys to get their shot i mean and like i mentioned mateos gamrat earlier i, I think he's actually booked to fight armand saruki and so i mean that's not going to happen obviously uh, that's a fucking amazing fight by the way um that's that's uh, you can't miss that fight i'm getting rubbery as hell for these next few months of fucking the ufc <laughs> because there is some shit that in the pipeline that either is either confirmed or could get confirmed is like uh you know what's the stuff that's already confirmed is confirmed and then then we're going to start talking about like what's going to happen with oh, there's john jones is right there like that's going to come up at some point that's going to be like mm, like that's just like going to be so good like the this what's coming down the pipe for the ufc some of these fights that are going to get and it's it's starting to look like it's probably definitely going to be the John Jones uh, Stipe fight too because I mean we yeah. had uh, a, a bunch of heavyweight fights get confirmed pretty recently like between the last time right. we talked about that and now um, Tom Aspinall is going to be fighting uh, who he's fighting Curtis Blades Curtis Blades yeah, yeah. I mean, thank you I, I I was blanking out on that too. Um, and we, we saw that uh, Cyril Gan is going to be fighting Taito Ivasa. So a lot of the other dudes who Jan Blahovich is fighting uh, uh, Rakic. Rakic. Uh, that's coming up. So that's a fucking damn good fight right there. And the next card that we're going to be covering, uh, June 11th, that's my fucking card. That's my Super Bowl uh, card right there. Glover Teixeira defending uh, his belt against Yuri Prohoshka, which the closer we get to that fight, the more I'm starting to believe in Glover Teixeira. Um, I think he's thinking he's going to get it done, man. Um, but then obviously, Joanna and Zhang rematch is on that card. Shevchenko versus Tyler Santos. Um, that's that's definitely going to be a fun one. I'm going to fucking change around the graphics. So we're going to go next level for that one, man. That's going to that's be, gonna be eye, well, eye bleach for that. Ah, that's just going to be eye bleach for WWM or WMA for me. Is that card is going to like really wash that stink off of what we just fucking saw? Yeah. 
yeah, that should potentially set things up nicely. Um, and I mean, I think uh, Tyla Santos is a little bit of a sleeper. I mean, certainly right. not picking her to beat uh, Valentina Shevchenko, but that flyweight division is coming back to life. Um, right. Well, coming to life for the first time, really, I should say. Right. Um, things are happening there. Uh, uh, a couple other things, some other shout outs, some things I wanted to mention from uh, UFC 274 before we start wrapping things up. Fiala um, looks amazing. Fialio looks great. That guy uh, is on some Hamzat Shemaev type of scheduling. Um, yeah. I was a little low on him uh, for his previous fight that he also right. got a knockout in like two weeks ago uh, yeah. because I was I was pretty excited about his, his UFC debut. I've heard about him coming out of uh, UAE, um, yeah. United Emirate Warriors, uh, or, or I forgot what the acronym is. Um, I knew that he was a big knockout guy. Um, he came up short in his... Uh, his debut fight, but he's right. come around with two back-to-back -back knockouts and he's going to be fighting again very soon. Um, so let me click on his name to see if they got that information for me so I can confirm what, for, what card he's going to be fighting on. And the dude he fought, uh, uh, God damn it. Is he's a good fucking fighter. I've seen him on that, um, distro TV. They do the, like the circuit, the circuit dudes, like the, the regional guys and that mm -hmm. guy's a good fucking fight he didn't just knock out uh anybody he knocked out a fucking good guy a good fucking fighter um yeah uh that was cameron van camp uh, and i'm looking at his record right now and he's got nine wins by submission four by ko so um they were given they were given fialio guys who were going to start giving him different looks not dudes who were going to yeah. stand in front of him and, and just want a war um, so I think that's that's pretty exciting. I think that that should be um, a good addition to to welterweight because that's that's probably one of the, the heavier divisions that I feel like is kind of starting to lack a little bit, a little right. later in the lower in the rankings. So it's excited to see a guy like that. I feel like we're going to be talking about him a lot. Just just the you just get that weird feel off of him. Like we're that's not the last we're gonna. We're not just gonna be like, oh shit! Like he, I think he's gonna, he's got some staying power in that division. He's got some growing to do. Um, yeah, I'm still even watching his fights. Like the dude's got power and he can really chuck him, but he's very, very flat footed. So I'm interested to see him yeah. grow as a fighter. Um, I'd like right. to know a little bit more about like who he's training with now, or if he's gonna be training, uh, changing up his his camps or anything like that. Uh, I don't know if he trains in the States or, or what the deal is, but exciting. I guess he trained at AKA, right? They were saying on the, is that right? That he trained at, yeah, he's trained with, um, that he was, he's like a fucking, he, uh, he trained really hard. He, he gave like him and Luke Rockwell has some fucking pretty sad out fucking sparring sessions. Another person that I wanted to mention, um, Lupi Godinez, was the yeah. second fight on the card. Um, that's one of the the few uh, preliminary fights that I was able to catch. I was at a friend's baptism during yeah. the card. So I caught that fight. Uh, and then I caught like the last four fights of the main card. Um, and she came out. I, I will say this confidently and not just throwing yeah. shade at uh, Rose and, and Carla. But um, on that night, this past Saturday, Lupi Godinez was the best straw weight in the building. Like if she was in the cage with Rose, Lupi yeah. Godinez walks away with the belt. She looked phenomenal. You're not gonna get an argument from me, dude. She looked phenomenal against uh, Ariane Carnalosi. Uh, arguably had three ten eight rounds. Um, I knew the judges weren't going to see it that way. I mean, she got at least one ten eight round. Um, but she is looking, and she's another person who's game as hell. Like she had uh, in her yeah. in her debut. I think she fought twice. And let me let me pull it up. She fought, yeah. yeah um, she fought in and came up short against Luana Car Carolina in October last year, and then fought the very next month. We're not against... a bad loss. That's not a bad loss to take against Carolina. Not not at all. Uh, and then she fought a month later against uh, Loma Luke Bunmi, and uh, now she's on a two fight winning streak. And um, even even more exciting that she looks like she's actually growing she has a sister who is like a super super high level like renowned like wrestler like collegiate wrestler um mm. and it's starting to show because she right. she shut she shut carnalosi down completely with wrestling um and it's starting to look like if that's the kind of game that she's evolving into and not just being like a, a bruiser like brawler type of fighter that she looked like when she first came into uh to the UFC, she's going to be a problem because there's not too many standout wrestlers at strawweight with Tatiana out of the picture, potentially right. going to flyweight. 
Carla Esparza, we know that's all she does, but she doesn't even necessarily look good at that either. Um, I think that there's, there's... I don't even want to say that name. I don't want to say their names anymore, dude. I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Carla Esparza, the cookie monster. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. that there's a lot of well-rounded girls uh, at straw weight, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to see somebody else with a really, really strong wrestling style come in and make some waves. <laughs> Um, but anything else that you want to talk about before we, we put a bow on it and start wrapping things up? Like, like and subscribe, please. My kids need wine. Um, we gotta we gotta make this happen. This is a lot of fun. Comment in the in the comment section if there's something you guys want to hear about. Mess message us on. We're on Twitter at Bike Club Pod. We're on Instagram, and you know. We love to hear from you. Uh, whenever, if you guys have something you'd want to hear about, so that'd be great. Yeah, any topic. We we would love to do some supplemental episodes. And if you say, "Hey, give us a deep dive on Blank Fighter," uh, or give us a deep dive on WEC, um, we that would be great. Give us uh, some direction to let, let us know what people would like to hear, just so we're not like talking out into the ether about something that yeah. no one's interested in. Um, but, we can do an episode of Nate Diaz and um, where he, you know, him and Nick and the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, you know what all happened with Manny Gambirian and Carl <laughs> Parisian and like kind of eyeball fucking each other. And the fucking, that, that would know. be really fun. I'll for sit me. there and do twenty five minutes. Well, we could watch it and be like, look, look how he does it. And like, yeah. He, see, he didn't slur as much. And Manny Gambirian. <laughs> Like he's only tw he's he's only twenty three, but he looks like he's forty four years old and owns a used car lot. Yeah, Manny he's, Manny Gambirian has people tied up in the back of a bodega. Um, yeah, for sure. Dude. Also, bleached hair. Nate Diaz is a dangerous. Nate Diaz. Like we're lucky yeah. we haven't seen that guy again because that was a different monster. Yeah. Um, that would was no. That, that, that would actually be very fun for me because I, I'm dude, pretty sure I've probably mentioned it. Like I'm pretty sure the old stories and shit. Well, not only that too, like, I, I don't know. If, I don't remember if I've mentioned it on any of our previous episodes, but I've never watched the ultimate fighter. None of it. Yeah. I've watched season 23 that Joanna was a coach on. Yeah, I watched I, it oh. later. You know what I mean? I, I watched say, that more recently. Um, but I've never, when you're alone you uh, mean later or you mean like <laughs> later, I'm just a, a sadist. I like to see Claudia yeah. Gadelia just get bullied. No, and not only that, one of the worst coaching jobs, horrible. Yeah, someone, so as someone who has seen the ultimate fire early, like early on, like I can see your talk with like Chris Lehman pissing in people's beds and like fucking, uh, I just like, you could just go on and on and on about some of that shit. Yeah. Like why the fuck did they let, um, uh, what was his name? I, why do I want to call him uh, Gay Country? But that's not his name. Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson. Like, he had no business in the Ultimate Fighter. The guy had been, like, an MMA fighter for, like, 12 years. Yeah. He had, like, been... I, he had actually fought in the UFC, right? Or am I he wrong? hadn't fought in the UFC, no, no but uh, his resume he basically was... basically should have. Yeah, had, he had... Yeah. And then he was just out there, like, murdering these guys who had been fighting for, like, three weeks they're like i want to give this a try i used to play football and <laughs> right now is like very cool <laughs> and, and like knocks on the fuck out cool and i'm sure dana okay so I, I i gotta go back and and rephrase what i said a little bit i watched yeah one episode of that season of the ultimate fighter because i yeah. wanted to see roy nelson beat the shit out of kimbo um yeah. and that must have pissed dana white off so fucking bad that right. kimbo's first fight the coaches the coaches aren't <laughs> fucking stupid They're like yeah, yeah put kimbo against roy nelson so we can get his fuck get him out of the fucking way that shit's done and and yeah. and he must have been so fucking mad that it's like guys you're really going to fucking shit on the kimbo experiment right out of the bat yeah. right off the gate and it was it was such a uh a bully schoolyard beat down to where it was just yeah. like now i'm going to crucifix you and just get you with these little pitter patter punches from, yeah. from the bottom and make it so there's nothing you can do it wasn't even exciting it was just smothering um and it's yeah. what they deserve because roy nelson at that time was probably a guy who could have easily came into the heavyweight division and been like two fights away from a title <laughs> right <laughs> yes and then they're just like hey go and it like because who was it uh mitrione was like fresh off of like his cup of co cup of coffee in the nfl Shab was brendan Shab. i mean there was like 
I mean, and then he's just kicking the shit out of these fucking guys. And it was Rashad and Rampage, right? Like he probably could have fought. He probably could have fought either one of those guys. He'd been pretty like oh. like decent. He went and he probably could have beat Rampage. I don't think he would could have beat Rashad at the time, but he probably could have beat Rampage at the time. So it's like, what are you talking about? You're coaching. Him. Yeah, I know that. You know what? That would be a really, really fun like deep dive to go back and look at all the seasons of the Ultimate Fighter, and kind of go back and try and predict. Not even predict with the the benefit of hindsight. Look and see like, okay, which guys who won the Ultimate Fighter or were on the Ultimate Fighter very likely probably could have beat their coaches while they were on yeah, the show. They- the gift of hindsight, yeah. The gift of hindsight was just like we talked about it again. How badass Conor McGregor is mm. when he was in, he was when he was calling that TJ Dilla show and like fucking creating that fucking all that shit between Team Alpha Male with Dwayne Ludwig and all those guys. Like you little fucking snake, snake in the grass. Oh, you're a snake in the grass. Like he, was that's like, true. Dude, you were so badass. He played their entire fucking crew, dude, and, and dude, he was they're right all too. out. The TJ's yeah. gone. Um, uh, the homies' like career's never really been the same. Um, God damn it! Why can't I think of his name? I should, but. Um, Golly, tatted up, homie. Uh, Garbrandt, Cody Garbrandt. He had Cody Garbrandt, like, don't fuck that. I fucking, blah, blah, blah. like, that was, dude, the way he had those guys. And then TJ's just sweating because he's knowing, like, him and Dwayne Lightwick are, like, dipping. I never even really considered that. TJ must be standing there, like, God damn, this guy is God, like, spot damn, on. How does he <laughs> fucking know that I'm doing that? Like, getting, because I've been in those situations where, like, <laughs> I get called out for my bullshit, but, like, I haven't told anybody that. I've only been planning it out in my mind, and maybe, like, one other person knows. And then you get called out for it in like a super specific way, and they're just lucky. But then you're just like hell, a fucking sweating. He just called out. He's like, "Yeah, it's you." And like, what was he? How did Connor even know that? Like, how did he even know that that? Was... And like that, why? Why did that matter to him? Like, it, I what, think why he just even saw say that he wasn't he gonna just... fight any of those guys. <laughs> like, he just he, he just, just saw fucking... a chink in their entire team's armor. And yeah. just like went for it immediately, and it, Dude, it caused him to kind of melt down for a while. Like that was so cool, and it, and, and it really? birthed one of my favorite sound clips or sound bites from any anything MMA related ever. Which is that dude when they're like having the shoving match, when he like comes in and gets in Cody Garbrandt's face, he's like, "Take care of your underwears. I'm gonna fuck you, man." <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> that. Dudes, dudes from from Team Alpha Male, they're like, yeah. "What?" Like even yeah. then, like everyone's ready to fucking fight, and he's like, "Did he just fucking say that?" Yeah. Oh, look, yeah, look that up as soon as we, we finish. Take care of your underwears. I'm gonna That's fuck up you. There with let me bang, bro. Just let me fucking bang. That would be a fun one, um, but yeah, we we will um, we'll do a little bit of research and see what would be fun uh, a fun like topical episode Snake like that to do. Grass. Just call them out, dude. That was so cool. And then Dwayne, Le- him and Dwayne Legwood did, and it's like Connor was right. <laughs> what the hell? That guy's crazy, man. That guy is crazy. He's an, on another. There's a there's levels and levels, and then there's levels, and he's just wild, dude. Connor has cocaine that we will never have yeah, access to. He like has that, <laughs> that Rick and Morty cocaine, dude. That's a, like crazy shit. Interdimensional shit. Yeah, man. Well, uh, let's put a bow on it. Uh, for our viewers, uh, I'm pretty sure, I, I promise you, we will see you again before UFC 275 because it's going to be a little bit of a wait for that. Uh, we'll find a topical show to do. Um, to do about or you know we'll hit on some mma topics some current events um because there's going to be a lot happening between now and then i'm sure a true that... crime podcast of how pat berry groomed um uh, his uh young fiance tug rose there's a lot we can talk about regarding crime in mixed martial arts there's yeah. a whole world of shit that crazy we can horse there. so let's go let's Melvin get it man. yard Melvin. dang we can do like a whole melvin yard and like yeah, we can do that. Joe Sun. <laughs> oh, Joe Sun is an absolute fucking monster. War machine, dude. We can oh, do a war God. machine true crime. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're going to have to brush up, though. I mean, I'll definitely have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I have referential knowledge of all mm-hmm. of these things, too. But um, to for, for the sake of a, an entertaining podcast, um, 
yeah, but that's that's going to be just as fun for us as as it would be for our listeners, man. So, Brandon, thank you for joining me again. Uh, it was you. a really fun episode. Uh, I will say good night for now, and I will see you again soon, man. Have a good night. Pat Barry, go fuck yourself. Dying of fire. <laughs>